Amber Heard is a feminist icon. Johnny Depp in this trial proved that Heard has borderline disorder. This trial is key to understanding the extent of the deception of today's feminism. If you are a Johnny Depp fan, be sure to watch this video and share it so it gets to him before the trial is over. The video contains evidence that he is innocent and was the victim of the planet fraud. Hi Johnny, she wants to kill you. I don't know if you know, but you have exposed feminist's biggest secret. It's all based on borderline disorder. I know all about these disorders. I have 30 years of experience. An experience that almost ended in death. In a moment, the whole world will see that you are the victim of a monster. The evidence is supported by short quotes from books by world best-selling authors. In a moment, you will see in this moment evidence that you are dealing with a monster. My name is Tomasz and I live in Poland. I'm almost your age. I'm 54 years old. Also, I have worked hard all my life. Today, I have nothing. I have two marriages with borderline women behind me. Both of my ex-wives, like Amber Heard, were diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. This disorder stemmed from the fact that they were both sexually abused as children by their fathers. Both accused me of abuse. The first relationship lasted 23 years, the second 9 years. The first abuse trial has now lasted 12 years, the second ended in a dismissal. This is a worldwide phenomenon. But I know men who have been accused twice by the same wife and have been in jail twice. They can't deal with me because I have evidence and I want to show it to the world. In Poland, no journalist wants to show a man who has two accusations of abuse. This is because I have indisputable evidence that this uh, planet fraud. My dream is a trial with media participation, like yours. Today I know every nook and cranny of the fucked up borderline psych, and that's my only asset. A ticket back to a normal life. They both wanted me dead. Borderline is a brain that's been conditioned to perceive strong external stimuli. When things happen around them, they are like Dr. Jekyll. Stability for them is, a, is stagnation. Then they create confusion around themselves and Mr. Hyde comes of them. Their victim are men who pull on the umbilical cords. In Poland, false accusations of abuse are a plaque. It's enough for a woman to say that her husband beat her and the man is immediately arrested. The verdict is just a formality. In this film I will show only a tiny fraction of the evidence. In Poland this is an industry in which prosecutors, police, judges and journalists are shareholders. In a moment you will see an explanation of where this accusation comes from. Here I will refer to world best-selling authors such as Alex Kava, Jonathan Kellerman, Harlan Coben, Michael Connolly, Yo Nesbo. In the next part you will see how both accusations were edited against me and the evidence that they are false. You will also learn about a book I wrote 11 years ago. The book describes how I watched my first wife prepare a false accusation of abuse against me for a trial that has lasted 12 years. You will see shocking evidence of the mafia-like structure of the prosecutor office and the courts in Poland. In order to make the accusation of bullying credible, they fabricated a false bomb alarm in front of the prosecutor's office. You will hear a recording from which it is clear that my then wife knew perfectly well that she had a GPS and not a bomb under her car. Yet she goes unpunished. You'll see what they did to me because I refused to admit to a crime I didn't commit. Planet Deception. Here we go. First up, the world's best-selling authors. Joe Nesbo, The Snowman.
She was just 19 years old when she killed the two women in Bergen and Gert Rafto. How can a person who is that crazy get through the psychological tests for police college and function in a job for all these years with no one being any the wiser? Good question. Perhaps she's a cocktail case. Cocktail case. Someone with a bit of everything. Schizophrenic enough to hear voices but capable of concealing her illness from those around her. Obsessive compulsive personality disorder mixed with a dash of paranoia which creates delusions about the situation she is in and what she has to do to escape but which to the outside world is simply perceived as a certain reticence. The bestial fury that emerges during the murders you describe tallies with a borderline personality, the one which can control its fury. If you're dealing with a woman with borderline, you have to have a mind as quick as lightning. Catch, grab, all the evidence, otherwise she will destroy you. My ex-wives had borderline because they were molested as children. Let's hear what I found in Alex Kava's book. Alex Kava, a necessary evil. That's one thing that always amazes me, Maggie said. The different ways in which each of us deals with the evil we've experienced. Most serial killers have been abused at some point during their childhood. They end up butchering innocent people, usually at random, sometimes using their abuse as an excuse or a justification. But you turned around and gave your life to the church. We are molded from children to be victims of such psychopaths. We are told to forgive, to give second chance, to be understanding and to respect every person. I also forgave the first time. Supported in therapy was understanding and ended up on the street. And the pedophile daddy is now the best. In the second case, the second wife was after therapy, was sex successful. Everything was supposed to be okay until five years later, two years after getting married, I found myself in jail and was lucky. I didn't end up a cemetery. I robbed myself to death. This woman really do have a need to kill, and I will prove it. Harlan Coben, stay close. I put Terry, Lorraine said. How else? How did you get in? You're kidding, right? Ray lived in a basement with narrow window. I opened one and tossed the metal into the middle of the room. Simple as that. Funny thing, though Ray cutting up the body. What about it? It's like opposite of what I said. I'm not following. When I experienced violence, I found out I had a taste for it. I interviewed one such man in April in 2021. Like me, in second time, he was accused of waiting to kill this woman under stand up in jail. He served eight months convicted despite no evidence and no witnesses. The paralysis of his left hand is visible. He holds his dog. See what he says about his concomitant. The interview makes it clear. The mother dead early and by the age of 18 the young girl was living with her father who never had a partner. Deception. Jonathan Kellerman. Hot underpants. Jonathan Kellerman, deception. I said, thanks. Anything you want to tell me about Elise? From what I hear, she's just like her sister. How so? Hot pants thinks she's an intellectual, lies like a convict. My family's been running one of the best crab joints in Baltimore for 60 years. Listen to Sandy, it's a greasy spoon, I'm imposing by wanting her to occasionally help out. Hot pants, I said. Frank Stewer said, I'm not talking fashion, that's an old-fashioned expression for slut. Okay, you want to know something about Elise and Sandy. Both of them got bothered by their old man. Know what I mean? Molested. That's another word for it. Hot pants. Great term for both of my ex-wives. Jonathan Kellerman. Deception. Nothing erotic, said Howard. The two of them at a casino, this cell had won some money. A bald little man, I attribute her hostility to him as a yearning for mastery after a childhood filled with effective helplessness. Sophie Della was an underdog, successful people with an undomesticated wicked from their mother. That's how they get into our lives, and this is how they unpack their hostility. 
they want to control us. A child full of effective haplessness requires the ritual sacrificing an innocent human being. So far, no one has challenged the right as mentioned. Now it's too late, especially since Jonathan Kellerman is a psychologist and therapist. Harlan Coben, the innocent. Nothing had changed. Matt had learned that his wife was a lie, that she had done tea things that would make most men turn away forever in disgust. And he had reacted WITH unconditional love. Over the years Olivia had gained enough distance to see that her awful upbringing made her, like so many of the girls she worked with, lean toward as self-destruction. Men who grew up like that, in different foster homes and under W hat could best be described as poor situations, usually reacted with violence. That was how abused men showed rage by striking out with physical brutality. Women were different. They used more subtle forms of cruelty or, as in most CASES, directed the rage inward they cannot hurt someone else so they hurt T themselves. Harlan Coben described my second wife accurately here. She said I was the cure for all the evil in her life. Six years later she sent me to hell. Olivia Candy has borderline and will destroy Matt in a few years. That's for sure. I would like to thank all the authors listed. You guys are wonderful and your novels are great reads. You have been with me through some of the most difficult times in my life. Your books helped me keep my balance when I was a prisoner of Polish folks in Togias. A couple seen as exemplary. 23 years together since high school. I was recognized because I was the founder, coach and competitor of the karate club in Oborniki. As the only sportsman in the region, I was awarded in all categories for sportsman of the year. What was done to make it credible that I am indeed a guy who abuses his wife? Knowing that I had evidence in the form of recordings, internet correspondence and witnesses, they preparated a false bomb alarm at the prosecutor's office in Oborniki. This was to give credibility to the report on a man who no one would suspect of abusing his wife. They, they were not even impressed by the fact that I had in irrefutable evidence. Among them was our recording that clearly shows she knew she had a GPS under her car, not a bomb. I had told her that a week earlier. I installed the GPS at her own request. Listen to this recording. Ale to, to, to pre, preparujecie w jakieś historie. Zapomniałaś o jednej rzeczy, że wyraziłaś zgodę, żebym ci dołożył GPS. To też mam nagrane. I założyłeś. Ja mówiłam, że masz to zrobić. No i dobrze. Tylko wiesz, w obliczu y, twojego mądrego kolegi, to nie wiem, do czego byście się mogli posunąć. Gdzie ten GPS naprawdę był i czy to jest ten i czy ktoś gdzieś z nim, z nim nie jeździł. No to bardzo nudne mieliście, macie oględziny tych moich wy, wypraw. Do you already know what my circus is about? Poland is the only country in the world where it is possible to case a false bomb alarm under the prosecution and the perpetrator remains unpunished. What's more, the witness is charged and years later found mentally ill and put in a psychiatric ward for life, because that was the plan. Even that day, June 17, 2010, prosecutors had wanted to listen to those recordings. There would have been no case and I would not have known what an elf year around nightmare this country has been. As a result, anyone who wants to debate me will come off as an idiot, because there is more to this. The surrealism is that on this day, prosecutors should listen to this video and charge the woman with a crime, and I should go home. That's the situation described in Michael Connelly's bestseller.
Michael Conley, the Lincoln lawyer. The flip side of that was that the DVD was so good it might be too good. It directly contradicted the victim's statement to police about not knowing the man who attacked her. It impeached her, showed her in a lie. It only took one lie to knock a case down. The tape was what I called walking proof. It would end the case before it even got to trial. My client would simply walk. Now it's going to get worse and worse. Six months after the false bombing and false accusation, and I made this short video. 10 listopada 2010 roku. W związku z tym, że w tej chwili to co się przeciwko mnie jest sprawa karna którą e, całkowicie wmanipulowała mnie obornicka prokuratura, szczególnie w osobie prokuratora Jarosława Lewickiego. Wyrażam swoje obawy przed tym, że e, prokuratura, wiedząc o tym, że mam niezbite dowody na to, że spreparowała i swingowała całą sprawę, dokona czynności prawnych, e, również swingowanych, pod kątem skompromitowania mnie i wprowadzenia w konflikt z prawem, na przykład poprzez e, podrzucenie narkotyków, do samochodu, poprzez na przykład rewizję w domu, w którym w tej chwili mieszkam, gdzie przez przypadek może się okazać, że podczas rewizji znajdzie się, znajdą się narkotyki lub jakieś materiały kompromitujące. W związku z tym, żeby się przed tym zabezpieczyć, bo mam poważne obawy przed tym, nagrywam to, ponieważ również dobrze wiem, nie mam na to dowodów, że prokuratura jest powiązana ze światem przestępczym, umarza postępowania wobec przestępców. Dzisiaj jest właśnie, jestem tuż przed rozprawą, przewiduje działania prokuratury mające na celu właśnie zdyskredytowanie mnie w oczach prawa, w oczach społeczeństwa. W ten sposób się zabezpieczam przed działaniami prokuratury, która na pewno będzie chciała coś zrobić, aby mnie skompromitować i zlikwidować problem, który tworzę poprzez to, że z, z, w całości zdemaskowałem ich działania przeciwko mnie. Do you think I'm being hysterical? See what they did after a seven year trial. My second wife handed me to them on a plate. It turned out that I ended up with psychiatrists who were doctors, not frauds. In a two-hour interview, I proved that the opinions stating I had a mental illness were false. The psychiatrists did not take the cold ordered treatment. I turned to the leader of the fight against lovelessness in Poland, member of parliament Jerzy Jachnik. Six months later he spoke about me in the Polish parliament. March 22, 2018. I again I appeal. Skargowy. Te, te, te psychuszki. Niestety, tego jest za dużo. Ja już nie chciałem, ale już koledzy zadawali pytania. Nie mogą być takie przypadki, żeby w zakładzie psychiatrycznym, ja teraz zajmuję się sprawą, chłopak siedzi 6 miesięcy, czy komisje go skierowały do zakładu psychiatrycznego. Nikt mu żadnego leczenia nie prowadzi. Nikt. Dyrektor zakładu psychiatrycznego wydaje y, sam już na własną odpowiedzialność opinię, że on jest zdrowy, a on dalej tam siedzi w tym zakładzie psychiatrycznym. After that speech, Mr. Jachnik promised me to publicize the matter in the media. Later, when I called him, trying to remind him of my case, he stopped answering the phone. I got out eight months later after hard-fought battles. The judge had to release me because a panel of independent expert psychiatrists found me to have no mental illness. To whom and for how much did the star of the fight against lawlessness in Poland sell me? This is the question you can ask him eight months after Jerzy Jachnik's speech in the Polish Parliament. Jestem zdrowy, po prostu trzyma się mnie dalej w szpitalu psychiatrycznym. Śmia jako osoba zdrowa psychicznie według psychiatrów powinienem być natychmiast zwolniony. Pani sędzia Katarzyna Stasia Gochocka, na której jestem prywatnym więźniem za państwowe pieniądze. 
z rejonu tego sądu w Obornikach pójdzie siedzieć. Mam też nadzieję, że będziecie to rozpowszechniać, ponieważ są potrzebne mi oczy. Jeżeli nie załatwią tego wasze oczy. In 2010, a month after the false bomb alarm, the false accusation and my brain thrown out of the house, I met a journalist from a local newspaper. She was supposed to explain the details of the scandal. Many hours of reviewing evidence turned into a relationship. She soon confessed to me that she had been sexually molested as a child by her father. She also showed me documentation that testified to successful therapy for borderline disorder. She also became a source of great knowledge about borderline disorder. Two years later, I was sure I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her. You can see her joy on Facebook. In June 2013, we got married. This was two months after a false diagnosis of mental illness. She knew full well it was the mafia action of the judge and prosecutors. Two years after the wedding, I began to suspect her of cheating. So, although it seemed surreal to me because it involved her sister's former lover. Writing to her about it on Messenger, however, I was sure. She claimed I was paranoid and a moron. In January 3rd, 2016, she called the police to an altercation that did happen. She accused me of abusing her and wanting to kill her. I was arrested. Six weeks later, in March 2016, her lover officially appears in like her whole world. This is the kitchen of our apartment. And now for the highlight of this film, the borderline phenomenon. They lie and they believe it. See, six weeks after arresting me, she posted on Facebook that she got married to Marcin Nocan, March 16, 2016. Now do you understand why she accused me? Manuel, the divorce was three years later on December 4, 2019. Saying, and I'd like that would you think it was a lie? Same is the accusation. I would also add that in March 2016, while I was in custody, she took steps to have me incapacitated. Even though she knew the diagnosis was false. If I had not proven it, I would never have gotten out the psychiatric hospital. This is also a total discredit to journalism in Poland. Trying to free myself from the bandit, I tried to interest basically all known journalists, investigative journalists and media. The journalist who declared to deal with the case suddenly became unreachable. I will present in a moment one such situation which we recorded. Martin Virvau, an honored journalist, I contacted him right at the beginning of 2020. He was very interested in the this case. However, over the next two months he became elusive. He stopped receiving phone calls from me. In the situation presented, I'm calling him from a third phone. From previous number, he did not answer calls. See what it looked like. We are talking in March 2020. Marcin Virval promises to look into the matter. It never happened. Kłaniam się Panie Marcinie, Tomasz Kaczmarek z Leszna. Panie Marcinie, e, ja bym nie chciał Panu za dużo czasu zabierać. Ja bym chciał się tylko dowiedzieć, bo Pan mi obiecał, że, że tą sprawą się zajmie, ale... Ja wiem, Panie Tomaszu, ja, ja widzę, że Pan tuje, ale po prostu ja muszę skończyć, ja muszę skończyć po prostu rzeczy, które, no, które mam do skończenia. Teraz tam ten koronawirus wszedł. Rozumiem, bo Panie Marcinie, ja po prostu e, mam w tej chwili naprawdę... T, t, sędzia wznowiła to postępowanie. I tutaj nie ma bata, że ona mnie nie skaże. To jest 100%, bo jeżeli ona mnie skierowała wcześniej na leczenie psychiatryczne, to na pewno będzie wyrok skazujący, bo to jest szersza afera. Nie tylko chodzi o tą sprawę z psychiatrami, chociaż sama sprawa z psychiatrami jest już na, na jeden program. I chciałem po prostu z Panem porozmawiać o tym, bo tam jest przestępczość zorganizowana w tle, w tym mieście.
mam to potwierdzenie już, druga osoba, drugi mężczyzna tak samo jest poszkodowany jak ja i to jest teraz w tym czasie, będzie się ze mną w najbliższym czasie kontaktował. I discovered this by accident while monitoring preparation for false accusation by my first wife. My first contact with members of this organized crime group was on May 5, 2010. This moment is described in my book as the entire preparation for the false accusation and the trial that has been going on for 12 years. Tylko jakiś orientacyjny czas, kiedy pan byłby w stanie mi to się tym ale wokół no, no. Bo ja jeszcze myślę o tym, czy, czy jest sens na przykład, żeby pewne e, na, materiały to przesyłać, bo ja podejrzewam, że panowie nie mieliście czasu po prostu e, z tymi materiałami się tam zapoznać. No ja muszę powiedzieć, że od, nie wiem, od półtora tygodnia, od dwóch, to ja w ogóle nie mam, nie mam czasu na żaden, na żaden taki po prostu większy materiał. Rozumiem. Rozumiem. To, panie Marcinie, umówmy się może w ten sposób, że ja nie będę panu... Jesteś, jednym słowem, jesteśmy umówieni na materiał, tak? To mogę sobie wbić do... Tak, tak, ja naprawdę bardzo chcę to zrobić. Umówmy się może w ten sposób, że ja będę panu... E, jak będą jakieś nowe informacje istotne, krótkim SMS-em po, po prostu wysyłał... Proszę dawać znać, ja to wszystko sobie wrzucam do folderu. This is a product. I just want to sell it. I am not looking for sympathy. From the very beginning, I have been doing a project to reveal the truth. I will not let this 12 years go by in vain, so that they do not manage to destroy me as a person. Then I will win. So psychologists are wrong to say that borderline is desperately seeking love and effort of rejection. Closer to the truth is a sentence from Jonathan Kellerman book that it is hostility caused by a desire to control someone after a childhood full of helpless effectivity. The whole truth is contained in Stay Close by Harlan Coben. When I experienced violence, I tested it. He explains the mechanism in The Innocent. Women are weaker, so they direct their aggression against themselves until they find a suitable victim. Then they use sophisticated forms of cruelty. In the first instance, the victims are men who were worried about their mothers in their childhood and youth. This may have been due to their self-destructive behavior or a long illness. The next group are men who had a better relationship with their mother than with their father. The reason could have been divorce of the father or a widow father. Such men have confidence in women. They respect them and look of partnership in a relationship. Therefore, they are easy target for false accusations. Just like you and me. Johnny Borderline gets involved with a man who somehow resembles the abuser who formatted her. They are entered with him and are crazy about him. He is in seventh heaven. If it is a man of the type described as LL, he is old of her intelligence, known each other forever, and then he makes a fundamental mistake. He gives her his whole self, caring, nurturing, sensitive for her needs. He already sees a home together, children, and a wonderful life. So does she. When they reach stability, there is a void that is no longer filled by stimuli. This void is a place in the brain. Normal people have love, friendship, empathy, suffering, and feel hurt there. Borderlines feed off of them. They can recreate them brilliantly and it gives them adrenaline. When this is lacking, they will partner with fun by taking their emotion to the extreme. Here is a very important point. They don't do it out of calculation. Everything they do is authentic. That is why later a man blames himself that he did something wrong. And he did it because he stopped stimulating her damaged brain. 
Awaiting and then a normal life and peace and quiet is deadly for the borderline. In one of the excerpts for your conversation with Amber Heard, you say that you can't behave like that to each other, that you want peace and quiet. For the borderline, this is the message. I gave up, don't hurt me. And that's when the program triggered, kill. This can happen during a calm conversation and she goes into a battle. You have shown weakness and she knows all your weaknesses. When you apologize to a borderline, you are admitting guilt and the guilt must be punished severely. That's why in relationships with narcissists, they are polite and docile. I'm talking about borderlines formatted by sexual harassment because those are the worst. Once they get the victim, they want to destroy her. And today the best way to do that is to not accuse her of violence. I call it the ritual of transferring dirt, where a victim is made of an innocent person. The real perpetrator remains untouchable. The media says you are both losers in this process. Not true, Johnny. You are the winner. You are the winner. You are not a victim, I wrote in the lead of the video. You didn't give up. You didn't freak about washing dirt. It's not your dirt. You had two partners before and nothing like this happened. I hope you watch this movie. I hope the jury, the court and the world will watch it. I hope the world will claim me.